Hello and welcome to Indian Standard Time, a show that speaks to global thinkers and leaders, to people who have made their mark on the sands of time. Today I'm in conversation with Prasad Karevasam, Sri Lanka's High Commissioner to India. High Commissioner, welcome to Rajya Sabha TV. Thank you. My pleasure to come to you. High Commissioner, I'm very, um, this, this interview with you is, uh, takes me back to many years when you were in India uh, as Deputy High Commissioner more than 10 years ago, and now you've been back for several years, and now you're concluding your, your India visit. Is that correct? Yes, I'm about to conclude. Uh, I have been here for four and a half years. And it's, been, and it's been a very eventful four and a half years. Very eventful, very productive, I would say. Okay. And uh, well, I will, I'm shortly will be going as Sri Lanka's ambassador to Washington. We wish you all the best, High Commissioner. But, but let me ask you, um, your president, Mahinda Rajapaksa, was in Delhi recently to attend the oath-taking ceremony of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. There have, there have been a lot of reports, but you tell me. You, you're an insider. Uh, you were there at the talks. What, were the, what was the meeting like? First of all, I want to compliment Prime Minister Narendra Modi for taking the initiative to invite South Asian leaders for this ceremony. It was an unprecedented gesture, and I think all South Asian leaders welcome that. So how did it happen? Because I believe that, the, that you were first asked whether your president would come to Delhi. Is that right? Well, of course, uh, in there, is, there is a certain style of doing these things in diplomatic circles. Okay. But invitations came, and our president accepted. So, how do, just tell me, you know, it would be interesting for us to know because this is the first time ever that such a thing has happened in South Asia, and some some called it a mini SARC summit. So, just to give us some background on how the invitation happened, was it uh, Mr. Ajit Doval, today National Security Advisor, not the National Security Advisor at the time? Did he call you? The details of how such diplomatic uh, discourse take place is privileged information. Okay. And I cannot disclose in public, but I would say Indian policymakers who are, who are about to come and who are in mm -hmm. and who are functioning in the Indian system, they all did it the right way. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they had full representation of SARC leaders at the ceremony. So the Sri Lankan president, Mahinda Rajapaksa, arrives in Delhi and he gets a very warm welcome. In, in a sense, both uh, Mr. Modi and Mr. Rajapaksa are similar people, right? They're both very strong leaders. Well, uh, people in Sri Lanka see something similar in Prime Minister Modi in the way that President Rajapaksa is handling the country. In, in what They're way? Strong, uh, they committed strong leaders with sense of purpose in their way of handling issues. G give me an example. For example, with, the, for, with President Rajapaksa. Well, for instance, President Rajapaksa is very hands-on leader mm -hmm. who works with not only with his ministers, but with his bureaucrats directly as well. Which is what Prime Minister Modi is now doing. And I see that is happening here as well. It's a very effective way of uh, handling, uh, implementing policies. So the direction will be, the political direction will be given by the Prime Minister and, and his leaders. But the implementation naturally will be done by the if, bureaucracy. Yes, exactly. If, if you want to implement policies efficiently, yeah. you need to work with bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the key thing is not to antagonize the bureaucrats. Is that, is that correct? Well, I would not say that there is need to antagonize anyone. It's right. only that you want to mobilize mm -hmm. the bureaucracy to, to implement policy in a most effective manner. And President Rajapaksa has been very, he's very focused on what he has to do. Right. And he has done a lot for Sri Lanka in the sense that bringing peace to the country yes. and taking us through a development path very, very well. We are Sri Lanka today is clocking the highest growth rate in the region. Across South Asia? Across South Asia. This little country of 32 million people. Yeah. Yeah, that's no, quite yeah, incredible. No, 20 million, 21 million. 21 people. million, I'm 20, so sorry. 21 okay. million. We are okay. uh, 21 million people. Mm -hmm. And we, have, we are clocking the 7.8% growth. And this year also we are, we'll do that. So this little country of 21 million people is clocking 7.8%, much higher than India. Well, at this point. But we expect India to clock similarly or even more. Because okay. we, will also, we think India's leadership in the region is very important. Mm -hmm. And that is why we welcome the event that uh, Prime Minister Modi when invited SARC leaders. Uh -huh. And his uh, interaction with our leaders, SARC leaders, including yeah. our president, yeah. was main main thrust was 
South Asian Corporation, SAC, what can SAC do together? So what did he talk about? What did he say to your president? Well, he was, his primary message was that we as the region must work together mm -hmm. in the region and in the global, global scene as well. Okay. Of course, we discussed bilateral issues. Right. There are issues of bilateral, uh, bilateral mutual concerns. Right. And we had a frank and cordial discussion. Okay. And there has been some criticism in your own press within Sri Lanka about the, I think unnamed sources have said that the meeting didn't go on too well. What would you say to that? That is opposition newspapers or opposition blogs may have been saying that. Okay. My perception having been in the meeting was meeting was cordial, frank and friendly. And the president or your country has released several Indian fishermen since that meeting. Yes, exactly. Twice he has released. Not, uh, on the eve of the meeting, he released one lot, and then just last week, uh, on the eve of meeting, uh, on the eve of meeting with uh, Pres Pres Prime Minister Modi with uh, Chief Minister Jalalita, he released another lot. So it's all goodwill measures. So, so the meeting in itself, the meeting between the President of Sri Lanka and the Prime Minister of India, has you think set the ball rolling again in the in the bilateral re relationship. Well, I would say that Sri Lanka's India relationship has been always robust and, robust and strong. Okay. But like any good neighbors, mm -hmm. we have had aberrations, we have had stress, uh, stressors, and sometimes dissonance. Uh, we are on the right path, and then with Prime Minister Modi's uh, um, coming in, I think we are going from strong, uh, strength to strength. So this dissonance and this stress that you're talking about, High Commissioner, I'm going to take a very quick break, but we'll be back very soon. Please don't go away. We'll be back very soon. Welcome back. You're watching Indian Standard Time, and I'm in conversation with Sri Lanka's High Commissioner to India, Prasad Karavasam. High Commissioner, before the break, you talked about the fact that Rajapaksa, your president, had released two sets of prisoners before the meeting with Mr. Modi, after the meeting with Mr. Modi, but there continues to be some stress and dissonance in the relationship. What would you mean by that? There, it's, that is not a permanent thing. Okay. I am only episodes of stress. So what are these episodes? Episodes of dissonance. Of this, of For this. instance, yeah. when India voted against Sri Lanka at the UN, Human yeah. Rights Council to, uh, in Geneva. In Geneva. Yeah. That was stressful for but Sri that, Lanka. That was last year. This year, yeah, I think India abstained. Yes, therefore, there's no stress. So I, that's why I said in our, our relationship in general is very robust, very good right throughout. Mm -hmm. But there are episodes of stress and dissonance. So today. Those, those episodes are normal in any good neighbor relationship. So when India voted this March at the Human Rights Council in Geneva, and abstained actually in that vote was that was that that was very welcome in sri lanka and at, and we we are happy that india at last found its proper position okay but are you saying then that when india voted against did you understand the reasons why india voted against there has been you you've been here many years you're an old india hand you must you must know the 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 anger inside tamil nadu or the apprehensions against uh, a lot of the policies adopted by, by your country vis-a-vis -vis the Tamils in the north and the east inside Sri Lanka? Those apprehensions in Tamil Nadu are driven by external forces uh -huh. more than internal sentiments in Tamil Nadu because most of the leaders who criticize Sri Lanka has never visited Sri Lanka and experienced the ground situation by themselves. Okay. They are going by stories, hearsay, and lobbying by external forces, mostly separatist groups who are living in Western countries. Who are these separatist groups? Of course, they are, those are well known. There are LTT remnants that they are in many, many Western countries, okay. including some of them are active in Tamil Nadu. Mm -hmm. It will be difficult to name them because they will not give the proper names. Okay. They are, they are in, under many names. So this is disinformation and propaganda? Yeah, because, because when, when, we are, we are, when there are allegations saying that there are genocide in Sri Lanka, Yes. And that's a very, uh, that's a very fantastic uh, allegation because persons who are saying that do not understand the meaning of genocide. Even. Okay, but but let's... Sri Lanka has never no 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 UN body no country in the world has ever said Sri Lanka has said genocide. But in the last few weeks of the uh, of the ending of the civil war, which was a big event by itself in two thousand and nine, 
there have been several reports, High Commissioner, about thousands or hundreds of women and children also who were killed by the Sri Lankan army. We have never denied that there were casualties. It was, it was a conflict, it was a, it was a war. Mm -hmm. But there, those were combatants mostly and there were some, some civilian casualties as well. Women and children? Women and children were part of, children were not part of, uh, uh, th those who were there in the scene of combat. Yes. Of course, uh, were, were casualties. We have, we have, we have, we have accepted that. Okay. But that numbers are not what is being, uh, what, what is being 40, said. 40,000, the number Th that's that being. That number is again totally wrong because our, our, our figure is 7,900, which includes LTT combatants which is mostly LTT combatants. And does this figure of yours, 7,900, does it include innocent women and children, civilians? Uh, we, in our view, those who were, uh, if, if, for instance, Prabhakaran's yeah. family yes. died in his, combat. His son, his young and minor it, yeah, son, Yeah, and it's very son. unfortunate, but that is what is called collateral damage because they were in, in combat zone. So you can see that Prabhakaran's son was, was killed or he died. But do you th do, are you saying that he was not killed by Sri Lankan uh, soldiers? No, he, of course, how can you say no? It, he was killed, but he's, he's a battlefield casualty. It's, there are, in, in war, there are battlefield casualties. Yes. You have to understand that. Yes. And that is, that is normal in a situation like this. Mm -hmm. In every country, in every situation it has happened. Take, uh, for instance, neighborhood situations. Yeah. You know, it happens. But what I want to assure you, Sri Lankan security forces never ever deliberately killed any civilian. Hi Commissioner, that's, uh, you know, last month in May marked five years of the end of the civil war. And in, in the history of Sri Lanka, it was, a, it was a great, it was a big day in many days. Also in, for the region itself, and India was very closely involved. But I want to ask you, five years since then, do you think it's time for reparation for for both sides for reconciliation. I know that there has been a, 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 a we agree committee with that. that is what exactly up. what we are doing and we want to do it our way and we want external forces to, to let us do it our way. Who and, are these external forces? Like for instance, uh, UN Human Rights Council passing resolution on Sri Lanka is not helpful to us. Okay. Whoever who is all the countries who are sponsoring that resolution mm -hmm. um, are in their view, they are misplaced. Oh, in the, the, way the Americans for example? All, all those who are... The Americans sponsored. have been behind this resolution. Um, if all, not only the um, US, there are several countries who are behind the resolution. Okay, like who? EU, US, they are, they are behind the resolution. I think they appro we think their approach yeah. to Sri Lanka situation is misplaced. Uh -huh. We have set up what is called Lessons Learned and Reconciliation Commission. Yes. And we have a report of that. Yes. And we are implementing that report step by step and we should be allowed to do it in our way. But it's, been we, we it's taken five a, years, High Commissioner. We have, it take, you know, how, mon, how many years we had the conflict? 30 years. Okay. During that time when we suffered, how much of support we got? We got some support, right. but we had, to, we had to do it ourselves to eradicate terrorism and violence from our soil. So, you so think we did that. Okay. And now we are trying to build back mm -hmm. Your the own country, country, our country, and we have a process of rehabilitation, rebuilding, and reconciliation. But the president and is we are we are doing it our own pace. You cannot but force things on people. There is no way to top down approach will not work. We'll okay. have to have bottom up approach. All right. And we have to build build uh, build peace in the minds of people. But the it perception, is, but the perception is that you are doing it with a very heavy hand. That's a perception by external forces and some, maybe some, some separatist elements in Sri Lanka. Okay. But not those who, that's not the majority view in Sri Lanka. Otherwise, how would President Rajapaksa win in such large majority in, he, in, in elections? He's a very popular leader. He has brought peace to the country but and development me, of the country and development of the northern province. But tell me, when, uh, when Prime Minister Modi and President Rajapaksa had this meeting, did the, Prime, did the Indian Prime Minister raise this with the, with the President? We all we discuss the we discuss issues with regard to reconciliation process, of okay. course. And, and then, what did what did Mr. Modi say? What no, did the Prime Minister are, say? No, the, we, 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 we have a very frank discussion with regard to weaves of India and weaves of Sri Lanka and then we, we discuss those issues. No, but can you say can I say to you, can I ask you, did the did the Indian Prime Minister uh, ask the, the Sri Lankan president whether the reconciliation process was going 
on stream, whether people were responding to it, whether he was going to ask the opposition to come back to talks. Not in those words, okay. but it, uh, but idea of, of uh, Tamil National Alliance yeah. joining the government, join, uh, talking to the government, yes. and talking towards the reconciliation process was discussed. Okay. And it is our common objective. We also want T Tamil National Alliance to talk to the government on a sustained basis so that yes. we can we can go on the path of reconciliation. So, is so the India, president, India, India shares the same view. So is the president going to offer to the Tamil National Alliance or ask the TNA to join the government? President has always uh, offered them to talk to talk to the government okay. with regard to as to how we should go 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 forward. Okay. But more importantly, President has set up what is called Parliamentary Select Committee yes. on Constitutional Reform. Yes, that we want all parties to join and discuss as to what is the best constitutional model Sri Lanka should have for all communities in Sri Lanka to to be confident and to have justice. And, and rights. Okay, okay. Hi, Commissioner. Uh, I'm going to take a very quick break and we'll continue the conversation after this. Please don't go away. We'll be back very soon. Welcome back. You're watching Indian Standard Time and I'm in conversation with Prasad Karivasam, Sri Lanka's High Commissioner to India. Mr. Karivasam, before the break, this Parliamentary Select Committee has had 19 rounds of consultations between the government, between the Sri Lankan government and the opposition. Nothing has come of it. That's because Tamil National Alliance has not joined the Parliament Select Committee. Parliament is the best method in a democracy. They have, they have, they have come to the conversation. They have joined no, the they, discussion. They, 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 they have done no, that, no, but they no. say. I'm afraid you are not. You are misinformed, like some some in India, okay. especially in Tamil Nadu. Some of them are totally misinformed about Sri Lanka. All right. And they they make several allegations. Hmm. Tamil National Alliance did not attend the Parliament Select Committee as yet. Okay. We want Tamil National Alliance, all the par parties in the Parliament to discuss these issues at the Parliament Select Committee. Mm -hmm. Because we cannot have a top-down approach with regard to constitutional reforms. Okay. We have to have a bottom-up approach where all the all the parties, all the communities in Sri Lanka are parties to the, such a process. So, so far, most of our reforms, uh, constitutional reforms has been more top-down. So okay. this time, President Rajapaksa, who's a, who's a Democrat to the core, yes. says that we have to bring bottom up. In what way? So in what way will Parliament you bring bottom up? Parliament is the up? best, best form of the best place where all people, all the people represent. And he represented. explained this to Prime Minister Modi. No, that is. These are details. You know okay. that you. You know. No, but generally, if you've had a conversation, this is the first time that half, they're meeting. Half an hour meeting we had. That's not. A, it's not a place to do but all the all the. You know, it's a, it's a general conversation on big ticker items and okay. that's about it. Okay. But I am talking of what we are doing in Sri right. Lanka. And you feel that some parties in Tamil Nadu have, uh, are misplaced in their apprehension uh, and in their concern about these issues? They are misinformed and therefore they misperceive the ground realities in Sri Lanka. And they have fallen victims sometimes for separatist forces both in Tamil Nadu and abroad. So, okay, let me just uh, take you away now from this political discussion. I want to ask you, High Commissioner, there's been a lot of talk in the last few years about uh, business and economic ties. But for some reason, the Sri Lankans have held back from signing a free trade agreement with India. Why is that? We have free trade agreement with India. But you have you don't have a, a, an economic partnership, a comprehensive e economic we, Indi partnership agreement. A, a Sri Lanka and India, India's first free trade agreement and with I, any I country was that. ours. Yes, and Mojibar then ours was yours, and yes. it is there. Yeah. What you are talking of is it's a another the CIPA. comprehensive economic we partnership. We have agreement. not felt the need to go go that far as yet, but instead we are thinking of a greater strategic economic partnership. Now we are working towards that. What does that mean? What does that mean is that e economic partnership is not only free trade. Mm -hmm. It involves development assistance. It involves project cooperation, all that. So we will work on that basis. Okay. And there, there has been some concern in India that the Sri Lankans have been moving closely, uh, moving towards, closer and closer towards China. Sri Lanka is friends with all countries in the world. Right. We have no zero-sum game with regard to our relationship with India and, and China. Okay. 
it's a mutually exclusive close relationship india is our closest neighbor closest friend mm -hmm. china is also our, our our friend and they have been a very reliable friend mm -hmm. so we are not going there is no zero sum game involved in that. but uh, do you accept that there is concern in india about this uh, closeness this proximity that sri lanka has with china i have heard that and i am uh, i i don't think that those uh, weaves are um have any merit because our relationship with china is it's very deep in terms of economic partnership and china is uh, one of the china has um, contributed to big projects in sri lanka they have they give you a lot of aid as yes, well yes of course so uh, so that is uh, that is the bedrock but india is also like that india is india's uh, outlay of uh, india's uh, development cooperation is about 1.3 billion dollars which includes uh, 800 million credit line but i think and china is much more they're also building you know the expanding the colombo port they built the airport in hammantota which is president rajapaksa's home colombo port home expansion was not by china it's by the adb okay china no the chinese not, are doing something they are no, they are doing they are they are developing a part of the terminal no uh, hong kong company okay. is 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 developing one terminal which is which is chinese in no, a sense no it is not all, you know okay, there are other shareholders it's, I, it's I a see. it's a it's a very good commercial company it's it, these are commercial deals commercial deals we do and india i think india has bigger commercial interaction with china than sri lanka mm -hmm. so you don't think that uh, that the indians should be concerned especially since sri lanka has been resisting this comprehensive economic partnership agreement with we are, with we, are, we are not resisting anything neither india is demanding that there is no no demand of resistance but sri lankan businessmen are concerned that that no, something are, like this you no know, economies integrate at their own pace okay so when when the right time comes we'll start integrating and the right time is now right time is when when the when, when your economic model and our economic model mature enough and and can to link up with each other do you think so the, right the right time could time. be now the, the right time could be now with a new prime minister in india of course so we think um, uh, a strong uh, president in sri lanka and it's a give and you will require for a negotiation of trade agreements give and take when the give and take is right it will happen okay uh Prasad if i may call you that you've been in india for several years and now it's time to go like we said at the beginning of the show your thoughts about india before you leave india i i will miss india when i leave hmm. i had a very interesting uh, time here in the sense that uh, very comfortable work wise as well as uh, living here india is on the right path for progress and india we share for south all asia the, what do you mean what what do you make of it for for south asia what does india mean you know if india gives leadership south asia will progress and for sark to su succeed india's leadership is essential so it is india that must decide and integrate south asian countries together without falling prey for any sectarian and border related stress issues Prasad Karasam thank you so much for speaking to Rajya Sabha TV thank you very much i'm afraid we'll have to leave it there you've been watching indian standard time in conversation with prasad karavasam sri lanka's high commissioner to india next week we will have yet another global thinker or leader till then goodbye and good luck <laughs>